Hey there, everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com, answering the questions I get from around the world. Let's start off. Our first stop is San Francisco, California. This question comes from Johnny. He says, I saw in a documentary that Allosaurus had a weak bite, but its neck and head were strong enough to use its jaws like an ax. Do you think this is possible? I think that would be very hard to be able to aim if that was what he used it for. Also, who would win in a fight, Megatherium versus Therizinosaurus? Thanks, DG. You're welcome, Johnny. Here we go. Your first question. I don't think Allosaurus had a weak bite. I, I answered a question similar to this about Allosaurus bite in a previous um, show. And my opinion is his bite probably would have been very strong. Again, I'm basing this solely on how big the animal is, the configuration of the teeth, the size of the teeth and certainly the kind of animals that he's hunting. He's hunting animals with very thick hides, and so I do believe he needs a very strong bite. Now, to your reference about his head being used like an ax, I did see that he does have a very strong neck, and that he may have been able to slam his head down, and maybe that was what drove the teeth into the victim. But he probably wasn't swinging his head wildly. I think that bite would come when he's literally on top of the prey. So that may be why he's able to do that. Your question about Megatherium and Therizinosaurus, once again, so everybody understands when I get these questions, these are simply hypotheticals. Megatherium was a giant sloth and Therizinosaurus was a dinosaur, no relationship, but they both did have some pretty nasty weapons. Megatherium's, um, where Megatherium uh, has an advantage is he sort of has armor on his back, the kind of uh, thick, heavy skin that would have deflected some of the blows, but and he does have big claws, but in Therizinosaurus's case, he's got an arm reach that exceeds that of Megatherium. He's got gigantic claws. Um, he would be able to stand at a diff distance and, and uh, literally pummel a poor Megatherium, and I don't think Megatherium would have stood a chance, but that's kind of cool. All right, let's fly over to the United Kingdom to a place called Birmingham to a man named Jack. Jack asks, hey, DG, I have a question. Could dinosaurs uh, possibly have disorders such as Asperger's or muscle weakness, et cetera? Thanks for asking my question. Wow, 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 Jack, this is cool. I'm glad you asked this question. All animals, all animals on the planet, uh, no matter what species, some are born with a variety of different uh I hate to use the word disorders because that's not proper, but um, challenges. Sometimes they are born blind. Some are born albino. Some are born with uh, conditions that would have meant they couldn't function normally like other dinosaurs. Yes, they were born with that, but unfortunately the way nature works, dinosaurs would not have been able to take care of those kind of dinosaurs and they literally would have been the first dinosaurs to be eaten. And so even though they had things like that, if they were born that way, they wouldn't have survived very long. For instance, if you were born without the ability to recognize danger, then you wouldn't know to run when a predator approached. You're the last guy there, you're the first guy they eat. And so even though dinosaurs would have been born with those sorts of things, they wouldn't have survived very long. That's what differentiates us from everything else is we have the understanding that it's beneficial to take care of. We have the, the ability to recognize the need to care for those who are in need, and that's what separates us from the dinosaurs. Also, we're not as big as dinosaurs. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, let's jump over back to the United States, to Oregon, to a city called Astoria, to a man named Luke. Luke says, hey, Dinosaur George, how are you, how you, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Luke. Here's a question I was hoping you would answer. Did Albertosaurus, Despletosaurus, and Gorgosaurus live around the same time? Hope you can answer my question, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you, Luke. I hope you have a great day, too, and I am answering your question. Yes, there was a short period of time where those three predatory dinosaurs lived together at the same time in the same place. Albertosaurus, Despletosaurus, and Gorgosaurus would have seen each other. So, that brings to mind, how does three giant predators inhabit the same environment? Well, the way I think they did it is they divided up the food source, meaning I think Albertosaurus was specialized in probably hunting hadrosaurs. I think Despletosaurus probably specialized in hunting ceratopsians, and I think Gorgosaurus may have hunted both and probably would have tried to um, probably take prey away from the other two, I don't know. But when three giant animals inhabit the same environment, 
you see that they clearly divide up the different ecosystems so in order to take advantage of a certain part within them. Um, I think they probably were territorial, so they probably stayed away from each other. But yes, they did for a short period of time. I think they did live together. They did interact together and uh, probably fought with each other, and that would have been crazy. All right, now we're going back to the United Kingdom. You people are wearing me out. I'm bouncing all over the globe today to a state called Hertfordshire, to a city called St. Albans, to a guy named Louis. And I say guy this time because Louis is a cool word. Word. You don't call Louis a man, you call Louis a guy. All right. <laughs> so Louis, uh, here's his question. My question is, what are your thoughts on walking with dinosaurs 3D movie? Judging by the trailers, is it too childish? Many thanks for taking time out of your busy day to answer viewers' questions. It is my pleasure, Louie, and thank you for, for your courtesy and bringing that up. Okay, the, the uh, uh, previews, the trailers that I've seen for Walking with Dinosaurs 3D, I'm, I'm concerned. I, I'm very excited that there's another dinosaur movie, and man, do those things look realistic. But I'm very worried about kind of the, the way that, to me, it looks like it's going to be a very kid-like movie, and, and I understand that, and I'm glad. But um, on the other hand, I was kind of hoping for more of a uh, BBC-type Walking with Dinosaurs show where it would have been uh, more realistic instead of talking dinosaurs. So uh, I don't know. I, I guess I'll have to reserve my opinion until we all see it. Whatever the case, it's another dinosaur movie, and good for that. That's always good. All right. We couldn't have put these in order. Because now I'm going back to North America, back to the United States, to Pennsylvania, to a place called Strads Stroudsburg, to a guy named Kyle. So we're back to the uh, United States again. <laughs> hey, Mr. Blazing, uh, how's, how's it been on the road and teaching everyone about dinosaurs? It's been great, Kyle. Appreciate the uh, courtesy of, of the mister, but please call me George, Dinosaur George, DG, whatever you want. But thank you so much for the courtesy, and it's been great. And teaching people about dinosaurs is always a lot of fun. I was wondering how it... How it? How was it? Wait, I was wondering how uh, they found out that Paluxosaurus and Sauroposeidon were the same animal. Do you agree with this discovery? Thank you, and I hope you have a great time on the road again, mate. All right, well, thank you, mate. Um, Paluxosaurus and Sauroposeidon. You know, I think Paluxosaurus and um, who was the other guy? Uh, um, Oh my gosh, how could I forget his name? He's, he was the state dinosaur of Texas. Um, Pleurocelis, wow. I think it's Paluxosaurus is thought to be Pleurocelis, I think. I, if it's thought to be Sauroposeidon, I didn't know that. I was unaware of that. But I believe it's that they believe Paluxosaurus is the dinosaur formerly called Sauropos, I mean, uh, Pleurocelis. So I think that's the case. From what I understand, it looks like the evidence is pretty clear that it is indeed Paluxosaurus should be the accurate term for that dinosaur. I think that's the case. So that's my best answer. I think that's the case. All right. Now we're zipping back now to a country called Chile, to a city called Santiago, to a man named Arturo. Uh, Arturo says, hey, DG, I'm a big fan of you. I loved your work in Jurassic Fight Club and your videos in YouTube. Well, thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate that, Arturo. I want, I want to know your opinion on this theory. Looking at Spinosaurus, looking at his giant claws and teeth, I believe that his lifestyle would be similar to that of a modern grizzly bear, a solitary creature that only, that's only contact with other members of his species was during fishing. Or this is an animal who could also hunt animals smaller than him. Do you agree with me? I also want to ask you if you believe that Pachycephalosaurus and his relatives didn't use its head to strike head on but used it to strike the body of each other. I'm sorry for my bad English. I hope you understand my questions. Best wishes, your biggest fan in Chile, Arturo. Arturo, I completely understand your question. Your English is absolutely fine, not a problem. Let's get to your first one about Spinosaurus. Yeah, I do agree that maybe a grizzly bear is kind of an interesting modern um, uh, analogy of what Spinosaurus was. Being able to hunt on land when it wanted, being able to take down big game when it wanted, being able to move quickly when it needed, and most importantly, being able to fish when it wanted. So I think that's probably a very good similarity or a good animal that draws a, a similarity to modern animals. Now, not body design, we all know that, but behavior, very, that's, a, that's an interesting point. To your question about Pachycephalosaurus, um, 
by the time you had written this, I had posted one of my shows. I had uh, commented about Pachycephalosaurus and how I do believe that he is probably not running at a uh, rival and ramming heads because of the configuration of the skull and that he was probably using that for body blows to be able to either uh, knock a rival over or down or, you know, somebody proposed one time that Pachycephalosaurus may have been an omnivore. It's possible. And if he was, then perhaps he's even using that head to, to knock down prey in order to kill it. Don't know if he did or not, but that's certainly an interesting concept. All right. Thank you guys so much. It's been great jumping around the globe to all over the country. I appreciate you guys from all over the world asking questions. If you've got a question, you know what to do. I'm not even going to say it in this one. Thanks. I'll see you guys soon.